Hello everybody, this is Houston Brown with Houston Brown Photography and in this quick little video I'm just going to show you how I ended up shooting this shot. This is real simple. It was overcast outside so we didn't get a lot of light coming into this room. It was easy to light obviously because everything is white which is real simple and the fact that it's overcast means that the other rooms in the house that I shot it was very easy to expose to outside and inside. Uh, very low dynamic range there. So here are the images. That's the finished product, of course. I just lined up these three lights on this side of the room. It was kind of a large room, so I decided to use three. I had them out anyway, so why not? And the fact that I had this angled white roof made it real simple because it's just going to bounce the light and light up this side of the room. Then, of course, as you might suspect, I did the same thing on the other side. You can't see the other lights. Uh, they're not in the picture. And I just did the same thing to the other side. So all I'm going to do at this point is bring just these two images into Lightroom. So while I'm doing this, since this is so simple, there was one other little caveat to this image. And that is, if you'll notice, none of the lights are on under here under the cabinet. This had some up lighting too on top of the cabinet, which I turned off for this particular picture. And there was a reason for that. That reason is... The lights on this side of the image, or on this side of the kitchen, we could not get to come on. So let's say, let's go to this picture, let's go to the finished picture so I can show you what's going on here. Uh, you can see the light on here, and I guess I didn't have the light on here, but one of these, I've got the lights on all of. Now this is artificially lit. In other words, I did this in post. So I just told the real estate agent, I said, don't worry about it. We'll fix it in post. Of course, I had my hands behind my back with my fingers crossed. Uh, but no, I was pretty sure we could get this done fairly easy. I took uh, also this image. Let me check here real quick. There was one image I had. Yes, well, that's the finished product. So I don't really know what image uh, I had for the up lights, but we're not going to cover that in this. I just masked that in in Photoshop. So really what we want is these two images. And I'm just going to go over here, photo, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. And through the magic of video, I will just fast forward this real quick because this can take a while. All right, so here we are in Photoshop. I have these two layers stacked up on top of each other. And the first, this technique that I'm about to show you, which is a real simple, pretty basic technique. Um, a lot of real estate photographers use this technique when they bring images into Photoshop. I don't know how you cannot use uh, layers and masks like this, but you'll notice these hot spots here on the ceiling. And these are way over here to the left. The ones, the lights over here are way over here to the right. The main thing is, is where you're going to blend these two images in this area. You do not want a hot spot right up here at the top, right? Let's turn this back on and I'm going to create a layer mask. And I'm going to turn on the gradient tool by pressing the G key. And make sure that you have linear gradient selected here, not radial gradient or any of the other ones. And I have selected foreground to transparency. You don't have to, the foreground the background is fine too, but I'm, I'm going to stay with foreground to transparency. My foreground is black. So now all I have to do is come into the image and click. I'm going to hold down the shift key to restrain this to a nice straight horizontal line. Click and let go. And you can see black conceals, white reveals. So we've concealed all of this. Let me get to an arrow so you can see this. I've concealed all of this area over here. Now this top part of the roof might be a little dark, but that's something we can fix real easily in Lightroom. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. So next, let's take care of this cabinet issue. This is a little more in depth. So if that's all you need out of this video, you can end it here. But let me just show you how I did this. Fairly simple. I'm going to create a well, first of all, let's talk about, there's a couple of ways we could fix this. We could do this in Lightroom by just using the brush uh, adjustment tool and just bumping up the exposure and drawing in here, but then you'd have to go in here and mask out things. You can't do it as exact, but you could probably get away with it. We could come in here and duplicate this layer and change the blend mode to screen to make everything brighter and then just mask in this area. 
But the way you're going to have the most control over it is by putting a curves adjustment layer in here. So I'm going to put this curves adjustment layer. It obviously comes with a mask. And I'm just going to go over here to this curves and just brighten everything up. Now I can make it pretty bright because I can always adjust this at any time after the fact. So I'm really just looking at these areas underneath the cabinets here. And I'm going to make it about that bright. Now I'm going to fill this with black. So all I have to really do is hit Command I to invert the mask. And then I'm going to go in here and I would just paint, but if I start painting with a brush, let me make this 100% and 100% flow. If I start painting with the brush, then I'm going to run the risk of getting it on the cabinets as well. So I'm just going to hit Command Z to undo that, which I don't want to do. So what I prefer to do, now if you're good with freehand and that's how you want to do it, so be it. What I like to do is I prefer the pen tool as my tool of choice. You could use the polygonal lasso tool. But what I don't like about this tool is I'm, as I'm clicking through here, I really need to be exact and spot on. And if I goof up, like I hit something like that, then I got to hit the delete key to back up and do it again, etc. If I use the pen tool, and this is what I really like about the pen tool, I'll zoom in here so we can really see what's going on is I can just put a mark close to where I want to. And then I keep my hands, while I'm using the pen tool, I keep my hands over here on the arrow keys. And I'm using a Wacom tablet too, by the way. Um, this works with a mouse or a trackpad. I prefer a Wacom tablet. But once I lay this point down, so I put the second point out here, and let's say I miss where I want to put it. Now I can just use my arrow keys up and down, left and right, to position this exactly where I want it. Come down here to this point, click. Oop, that's not where I want it, so I'm just going to go to my arrow keys, move it about right there, click that. Let's move over here, click right here. Missed it a little bit. Get that right where I want it. Come down here to the edge of this cabinet, and you get the idea. So I'm just going to finish this off real quick, close this up. Once I have that, and even if I do the whole thing and I see, oops, this isn't quite right, I can click off the path, click on this one, and you'll notice that all these anchor points are hollow except for this one, which means that one is the active anchor. So again, I can use my arrow keys and position that and get it just like I want. Hold down the Command Enter key to make that a selection. Now, once we make the selection, we really don't want to all this evenly lit. So I'm going to use a brush tool. And let me give you one more tip in the brush because this is something I notice quite a bit. And I notice people control their brush either by going up here and clicking this and changing the size and the hardness with these sliders. Or you can simply right click and do it here. Um, or you can use your left and right bracket keys to make it larger and smaller. You can hold down the shift key to control the softness of the edge of the brush, which in this mode you can't really tell how soft or hard it is. What I like to do, and this will work if you have a Wacom tablet, if you, have, if you use a mouse or a trackpad, and on the Mac if you hold down the control and option key, You'll see absolutely nothing happen. But now when I click and drag left and right, the brush gets larger and smaller. That is huge. At least it is for me. I can adjust that so much quicker. If I move it up and down, look at this. I can adjust the hardness. And I get this red dot in the center to show me exactly how soft or how hard that brush is going to be. That is a fantastic tool. So again, control option or alt control on a PC, I'm sure. And you can make that adjustment. So anyways, getting back to where we were, it's a little tip for you. I'm going to make this brush as soft as I can about this size. I'm going to reduce the flow to about 3%. And I'm going to use my keyboard shortcut. I hold down the shift key and just push 0, 3. And you'll notice this changes to 3%. Opacity, if I want to use a keyboard shortcut, I just press the numbers. 2 is 20%, 3 is 30%, etc. If you hit two numbers real quick, like 22, 
two, two, it'll be 22%, 25%, etc. You get the idea much faster way for me than coming up here and putting in the numbers. So I'm going to go with 20% opacity, 3% flow, paint with white. And you know that if the light is up here, it's going to be much brighter up here and then it's going to really fall off as it comes down. So I'm going to come in here, make this brush maybe not so soft, about 45%, and paint in here and make this kind of a bright source right in here. Now I'm going to make this brush really soft and then just kind of paint down in here like this. And then I might go back, make this a little harder brush, go back up here and keep painting this to make this a little bit brighter. And you can just kind of work this area a little bit until it looks about right. Let's make this a little softer, bring this down in here. Now I'm going to make this soft again until you feel it looks about realistic as it can. Then I'm going to go ahead and deselect and then we have our light. There it is off and there it is on. The nice thing about this technique is that there is no color cast. <laughs> uh, as many of you may know, kitchens are notorious for having those fluorescent lights which gives off a green cast which is a pain in the butt. Uh, not so much in this image because I could really, uh, in Lightroom, just back out uh, the green because there's really no other colors in here with green, so I could probably pull it out fairly easy. Other than this plant, the plant would go a little flat. So anyways, you'd use that same technique on the rest of here. Of course, I'm not going to do them all for right now. This is the only one that would be tricky because you'd also have to mask out this um, faucet here because it's on the island and not over there on the back countertop. So you get that, and then, of course, we would just save this. And I've already saved it, so I'm not going to do it again. I'm just going to jump over here to Lightroom. And then, as I promised, I said this area up here was dark. Now, this is the finished product, so I've already, I've already done it. But how I did it is I went to this. Now, we, you know we have the gradient tool, which is shortcut keyboard shortcut M. The radial gradient, which is my absolute favorite tool in Lightroom. Um, and let me just click on that. And you notice, you can see this mark here where I actually put in the radial gradient. So let me, I'm going to go ahead and select it and delete it so we can see what this image looks like. So you can see it's a little dark here. And I'll show you why I just love this tool because you can use it. In, I mean, if lamps are left off in a bedroom, you can put artificial light, kind of similar to what I did here, but you could do it really quickly in Lightroom using that technique. But in this situation where this is a little dark, I'm just going to go over here, everything, uh, and of course I have this I have this radial gradient tool selected, and the only thing I have adjusted here is the exposure up just about almost a half a stop. So I'm just going to click and drag, you can almost do it anywhere. Uh, roughly about there, I'm going to rotate it a little bit to match, and then I'm just going to move it here into place. And then what I like to do, which I'm going to consider another tip, because another thing I see is, is people clicking on this and dragging it back and forth, which is, you know, a viable way to do it. I just find, and maybe it's because I'm on a Wac Wacom tablet, that it can get a little jumpy, and I like to be a little bit more precise than that. So in this situation, I would just click in the numbers area, and once that's highlighted, I hit zero, so I can see what it looks like. Now I go back to my trusted arrow keys, and I just bump it up, bump it up, bump it up until I think it looks right. Now I don't want to go so bright, obviously, that it looks like there's a completely wild light source over there. So I'm going to go back down to zero, and I'm just going to say, I think I decided on two or three, and if I go two and three and I can't make a decision, I go to 25. I split the difference. But actually, I think 20 is going to do it for me here. Hit enter. Uh, if I hold down the shift M key, so the M key is the, is the gradient tool. Shift M is the radial gradient tool, and that turns that back off. And I don't think I can show you. Before and after is uh, the backslash key, which takes me all the way to when I load it to that. So it gives you a before and after, and I did some lens correction there. Again, that's another video. And then here is the finished product that I gave the client. 
Hope you got a couple of tips out of that. I know it's a little longer winded than I wanted to. If you like the video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. If you have any other questions or any other videos you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments. We'll see you in the next video.